In this video, I will show you how you can lay out a skillion type roof, or what I often refer to as a double shed roof, using the concrete slab or the building foundation. And the first thing you're going to need to do will be to lay out the walls around the perimeter and make sure that these lines are parallel and square to each other. And even though your building might be a different size, we're going to use a 20 foot wide building building and our outside walls are going to be three and a half inches wide or built out of two by fours. And after you have laid that out and marked for the wall framing, we're going to draw a line down the center of the building and then place our two by fours on each side that will represent the total wall framing height. For example, the wall on the right is going to be eight foot tall and the wall on the other side is going to be 10 foot tall providing us with a two foot difference in height and feel free to adjust the wall heights as needed to fit your particular design and another thing you need to keep in mind is that if you're going to install windows above the lower roof then there's a good chance that this wall is going to have to be a little taller than the window and hopefully that makes sense but you're going to be able to adjust everything during the layout process and any mistakes that you make will be be able to be fixed before you start framing with this method. Next up, let's lay out our center wall and it's going to be a two by six wall. However, you can make your walls different sizes. And to lay out this wall, we're going to need to come two and three quarter inches from the center on both sides to get five and a half inches. And of course, these lines will be parallel to our center line. Next up, we will go ahead and lay a two by six out in this position. And even though it won't create a problem if it's a little shorter, it will be nice to have one a little longer like we're using here. And of course, we will use that later to figure out the wall height for the center wall. In case you haven't noticed, I'd like to point out that we are using the straight line that we have here instead of the edge of the building foundation that might have small variations in it. For example, we might have three and a half inches here, but over here we might have three and a quarter inches, and that could create a problem for our wall framing. And let's just go ahead and zoom around here to give you an idea of what everything should look like so that we're all on the same page here and that everything we're doing is going to look similar to what we have here. And I'd also like to point out that we don't need to use these boards. We could just use this and lay everything out accordingly. And you do whatever works easiest for you. Now, the next thing you're going to want to do will be to remove the boards so that you can create a line here that will represent the height of this wall and then a line here that will represent the height of this wall. Then we'll figure out the total rise of the roof rafter and for this example here it's going to be a 4 and 12 roof pitch providing us with a 40 inch rise in the height of the roof. So 10 foot in this direction will give us 10 units and we're simply going to multiply those 10 units by 4 which would be our 4 and 12 roof pitch and of course 4 times 10 is 40 inches and again these measurements can be changed as needed per your design. Now the next thing I want to point out if you notice that this measurement is exactly the same as the other side that's because we're working with a measurement that is exactly the same if your measurements are going to be different for example if this was going to be 12 feet and this was going to be 8 feet then these measurements would not be the same and in this example here, all we need to do is lay out one roof rafter. However, that will not be the case in the second or final example in the video. Next up, let's go ahead and lay out the lumber we're going to use for our roof rafters. And don't forget to extend the overhang that you are going to need also. And we will be lining up the top of the roof rafter with the top corner of our wall framing. Even though this will not be the 
the position we're going to use for our roof rafter during construction. And since we are going to be lining the top up with this point here, we will also do that on the other side so that the lumber will be parallel to the line we drew on the building foundation floor. And of course we're going to do the same thing to this side here so that we can lay out our seat cut. And that's going to be done by using a 2x4 with a square corner here, 90 degree angle. And of course this won't be too difficult. We will simply place it on top of another 2x4 and then line it up with this edge here, which should make sense. Even though you can change the height of your seat cut by moving this board down or up according to the design you're going to use for your building. And again, this is another example of why you don't need a framing square or complicated math formulas because now that you have this in position here, you can simply trace around the edge of it to create the lines you're going to use to cut the seat cut in the roof rafter. Next up, you can cut the seat cut or you can wait until you lay everything else out. Now let's go ahead and head over to the top where we will draw a line here. And this is a line that just goes straight off of this point here up. And of course we will do the same on the other side. Then we will grab a 2x4. Now this 2x4 represents the width of the ledger we're going to use to attach the roof rafters to the wall framing. So feel free to line the 2x4 up with the lines that you have created here and then we can simply mark the other side of the 2x4 to finish laying out our roof rafter. And like I said, once we have finished laying out this roof rafter here, we will be able to use it as a pattern to cut this roof rafter over here. Now the next thing we're going to do will be to adjust the bottom of the roof rafter. And if you remember me mentioning earlier that this line will not represent the top of our roof because we will now need to move the roof rafter up to the top of the 2x4 that's going to represent our wall. And that would end up looking something like this. So here we have a side view of what our roof framing is going to look like with our ledgers on both sides of the wall along with sitting on top of what would be our finished wall framing. And now the next step in this process will be to figure out the height of the center wall. And that will not be difficult to do. However, this can also be done differently. You could always flatten the top of this wall off or shape it to where the plywood that sits on top of the roof rafters will also connect to the wall framing. So the first thing you're going to want to do will be to draw a line that will extend through here or represent the height of the roof rafter. Then grab a couple of scrap 2 by blocks and line them up with the top of that line. Then we will mark the bottom of those blocks so that we end up with the final height of our wall framing. And before we do anything else, let's make sure that we mark where our ledger is going to be located on the wall framing so that we can use that, so that we can use it to locate the ledger later. And after we cut the center stud, you can see here where the two framing plates will work out. And hopefully this makes sense because this brings us to the end of our first example. In example Example 2, we are going to create the same seat cut we made at the bottom. We'll transfer the exact same measurement to the top and we'll not be using a ledger for that. So we're going to start off by lining the seat cut up with the top of the wall framing. And that of course would look something like this. And then we will head up to the top to where we can transfer the same measurement we made for the seat cut below up here. And after we cut it, it will look something like this. And in order to mark this side, we will do it in the same way we did for the rafter with the ledger and then we can mark it and cut it 
And now that we have finished laying out and cutting the roof rafter, we can figure out the wall framing height. And this shouldn't be too difficult to do because all you're going to need to do is measure the two wall framing plates and then transfer that measurement to here. And in our example here, we're going to be using two two by six that will be just a little bit over three inches tall. Then once we have everything laid out correctly, we can cut the wall framing stud and then position our two wall framing plates so that we can double check all of our measurements. And for those of you who might not have understood what I meant by cutting a wall framing stud that would represent the overall height of our wall, then that would look something like this. So we would have two wall framing plates and then our wall framing stud and then at the bottom we would have a sole plate and of course we would do that on the other side. And this is very important because once you figure the height of the center stud here you're going to need to make sure that you subtract the bottom plate for the wall framing to make everything work out. And if that doesn't make sense you you might want to re-watch the video once or twice or even a few more times. However, if it does make sense, then you should end up with something that would look like this and be well on your way to building a nice skillion or double shed roof. And if I had to choose between method number one or method number two, I would choose this one right here where the rafters are sitting on top of the wall framing plate instead of using a ledger and don't forget that if you are going to install structural plywood that you might want to put it on first before attaching the ledger however that will be something that you and your engineer or building contractor might need to figure out before you lay out your roof rafters because you would also need to deduct for that when you were laying out the roof rafter another thing to keep in mind would be using a variety of different types of building hardware also and for those of you who didn't quite wrap your mind around what I was talking about when I said installing windows above the roof here, that would be installing any windows in this area here to where you might need to install a header and a window sill. And of course you would have to adjust for all of that before and not after you lay out your roof rafters. So for example, if I was going to install a window in here, I might need to raise this wall up another foot or lower this one another foot to make everything work out. Which brings us to the end of the video and as always if you enjoyed it or learned something from it make sure that you let us know by hitting the thumbs up button or leaving a comment in the comment area.